The news I think we were all expecting to hear sooner rather than later, virtual shifting support now comes to the Wahoo Kicker Core. And with this update, Zwift and Wahoo will now be selling the Wahoo Kicker Core Zwift One bundle. This will include the Wahoo Kicker Core, the Zwift Cog, the Zwift Click, and 12 months of Zwift. And in more news that will make a lot of people happy, this bundle will be available in more global markets than the Zwift Hub has been previously. Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where I have all the details on what you've just seen and more. So a few weeks ago, Wahoo released an update to the Wahoo Kicker Core with this changelog. It was pretty vague. Today I can confirm within that firmware comes virtual shifting support via the Zwift protocol and auto calibration. Now this update is for all Kicker Core owners, so if you do own a Kicker Core, you'll get both those features with this update. If you're an owner of a Kicker that isn't a Core, stay tuned. But today's video is all about the Wahoo Kicker Core Zwift One bundle. Now today's changeover is similar to what we saw a few weeks back with the Zwift Hub Classic change, swapping the Zwift Hub out for the Wahoo Kicker Core, everything else remaining the same. Today we see the same bundle change for the Zwift Hub One. That now becomes the Kicker Core One. And with that, you get the Kicker, the Cog, the Click, and 12 months of Zwift. Pricing remains the same. In the US, EU, and UK, that being $599, $599, and $549 respectively. With this update comes more global availability. So Canada and Australia, you're in. As of late March, you will be able to purchase this bundle at pricing that's still to be announced. Jumping down to the technical specifications of this bundle, and the Kicker Core really needs no introduction. It's been around since 2018 and is a very, very popular smart trainer. A lot of these specifications are similar to that of the Zwift Hub slash Jet Black Vault version 2, but there are a few differences worth knowing about. Okay, top to bottom here, direct drive interactive smart trainer. Again, rear wheel comes off, bike goes on. Resistance type is electromagnetic. Out of the box, we get support for 130, 135 quick release and 12 by 142 and 148 through axles. The kicker core does have rear pivoting axle mounts, so it does have support for the kicker climb and elite riser products. The free hub this ships with is a Shimano Hyperglide 8 to 12 speed compatible free hub. However, that's not really applicable as this ships with the Zwift Cog single 14 tooth sprocket. That's all you need for the virtual shifting. Power accuracy plus or minus 2%. The hub was plus or minus 2.5%. The Kicker Core also does have a temperature sensor for more stability in hotter environments or no thermal drift. Third party power meter support, so you can pair your bike power meter to this trainer if you want to squeeze a bit more accuracy out of that. Connectivity, multi Bluetooth, AMP Plus, AMP Plus FEC. Max grade 16%, max power output from this trainer 1800 watts. Flywheel weight 5.5 kilos, a little bit up from the hub, which was 4.7 kilos. And this trainer is obviously firmware upgradable. Now there are two things of note with the changes here. No race mode, so 10 hertz power is not available on the kicker core, and there is no heart rate sensor bridging. One thing of note, the Kicker 5, Kicker 6, and Kicker Move do have race mode. Hmm, stay tuned for more on that. So for existing Kicker Core owners, if you were to grab yourself a set of the Zwift Play controllers and this new firmware, you're good to go. You can use virtual shifting with your existing cassette right now. Another alternative would be to purchase the Cog and Click upgrade and then remove the Cog from the supplied free hub, put it on your Kicker Core, and you're good to go. Before getting to the on-bike ride experience and data analysis, if you're not familiar with the whole Zwift virtual shifting setup, I'll put links in the video description below to my previous videos, which dives into all the details about gear ratios, the COG hardware teardown, and more. First up, let's do a sound check. How loud is this thing? Sound check one, two, three. Sound check one, two, three. Flywheel check one, two, three. All good there. Okay, once everything is paired up via Bluetooth, which is a requirement for virtual shifting, the gear changes are responsive and I had no issues jumping through the 24 gears on offer. As we've come to expect from Wahoo Kickers, it held that ERG mode set point at 200 and 250 just nicely. And those set point changes for my over and unders were no problems at all for it.
and really putting this to the test, the sprints. And there's something to know about the sprints, which I'll cover later in the data overview. Other than that, there's not much else to report, and that's a good thing, because this just seems to work. Okay, jumping now to the data analysis side of things, looking at the numbers coming out of this trainer, and I have a ton of data collected from all the testing over the last few weeks. I will condense it down though into just two data sets. After all, this is the Kicker Core, it's not exactly a new trainer. Now, first of all, before we get stuck into this, I will note that the new unit that Wahoo had sent over, which I'm calling the Kicker Core 24 here in the Llama Lab, did take a few hard rides and a number of spin downs to really get lined up and what I'd call bedded in. Something that's likely to be addressed by just riding the unit over a few days or weeks and just relying on auto cow, but I didn't have time for that. I wanted things lining up right away. So a few hard rides, a few hard sprints, a few spin downs, and here we go. So what we've got on screen here, the Wahoo Kicker Core 124 from Zwift BLE recording up against the trusted Asioma Duos. Llama Lab Test and a few additions to the Llama Lab Test too, which I'll go through. Look, overall 167, 165, very, very close. Diving in here to a new section of the Llama Lab Test, and this is what I would call the lower erg zone tests, where I'm now testing trainers and their ability to hold 60 watts, 80 watts, 100 watts, and 120 watts erg. Previously, all my testing has been 200 watts, 300 watts, 400 watt FTP plus, all that high-end testing for elite cyclists. The market's much wider than that now, and some people do want to know how a trainer operates at those lower zones. The answer for this is pretty good. Now this is unsmoothed data from the Asioma Duos in purple, so it is up and down as I'm a meat motor. I'm not exactly uh, perfect, but things are holding quite well and those are resistance changes are taking place nice and quickly. Onto the steady state, looking for any thermal drift or ups and downs or offsets and all looking pretty good there too up against the Asioma. 223, 223, doesn't get any closer than that. Again, more jagged there from the pedals as the Wahoo Kicker Core Zwift 1, which really needs a short nickname, doesn't it? Uh, has some smoothing on the data channel, but all is good there. In the sprints and responsive in the sprints for resistance, but the power is a little undercutting when using the little ring. I'll dive into that in my next data set and the trick. The peak power there robbing me of around 80 watts, I think. Think, um, but I do have a tip to resolve that later on. On to the over and unders for 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Checking for one, the accuracy, well, 233, 233, looking good there. And the responsiveness from the trainer. How quickly does it change up and change down? All looking good there. A little bit of wonkiness in this second set, 450, that's me. You can see the previous identical set that I did was a lot smoother on the pedals as I was fatiguing. Quite a big day in the lab. Uh, that's me going up and down there. The trainer holding that set point. Pretty well. Next up in the Llama Lab, what I call a bit of a torture test. It's a step test that I'm now doing in ERG, where I start off at, uh, I think it's about 100 and what's well, about around 100 watts ERG, and that's a two minute block from here to here, ending off at 660 or so as things uh, get a bit messy and I'm out of the saddle trying to hold that before I completely collapse. What this shows though is the trainer's ability to step up, step up, step up. Again, me being the meat mode, a bit choppy here, a bit choppy here, and as I get out of the saddle, things get a bit ugly. Power-wise, 227, 231, and that really depends on what I'm selecting here. It's a little bit closer there. So no major separation, no major gaps. Then returning to some more steady state, same as before, checking to see if there's been any thermal drift, offset movement, anything weird going on. And things are looking good here. The numbers are a little more elevated on the kicker core because there's a little blip right here that's happening. That's uh, bumping those numbers up a little bit. But again, no separation by 10, 20, 30 watts that I've seen in the past with broken power meters. And then just riding along in sim mode, what have we got? Uh, 89, 88, bit of up and down there, but nothing standing out that needs to be identified as problematic and needing more research. So all looking pretty good there from the power, from the Llama Lab with this setup. Pulling up the cadence before diving a little bit deeper into the sprint side of things. The cadence does depend on the rider and how smooth you are with your peak power phase as you're pedaling with each pedal stroke. That's how the kicker will estimate your cadence. Reading a little bit over by one or two RPM for this section through here, just riding along, pretty much one for one. And the same steady state as what I did over here was a little bit off. Again, I'm fatiguing a little bit. My pedal stroke mightn't have been as smooth, but look, close enough ballpark. If you do need absolute precision from your cadence, a cadence meter on the bike would be the way to go. This overall, pretty good. On to data set number two and diving a little deeper into the sprint performance of this trainer. This is almost identical 
to what the Zwift Hub was doing as well. And with virtual shifting, it rewarded you for being in the big ring for the sprints. So sprint number one here, undercutting on the kicker core, reporting only 11.29, whereas on the pedals, I was doing 12.14. 12.14's more realistic and where my sprint is at at the moment for peak power anyway, not sustained sprint for any great periods of time, but it was undercutting consistently. However, if I did put it in the big ring just for the sprints, you can see the change in gear here as the power drops down, boom. Peak power on the pedals was 12.31. Peak power from the trainer, like one second over, just again, a bit of a data recording jump there, 11.95. So much, much closer in the big ring for sprints if you're sprinting above 1,000 watts. The next question I have, is this something they can fix in firmware? That being the sprint performance in the little ring. I don't have any answers on that just yet. I will speculate. We're probably hitting hardware limitations of this unit, given it's around six years old and was never designed to be used for virtual shifting and such hard efforts in the little ring. Anyhow, if you're dropping watt bombs above 1000 watts, put it in the big ring, get your sprints done, drop it back and you're good to go. Okay, so quite a lot to digest there with this hardware bundle change over on Zwift.com and now being offered by Wahoo Fitness 2 and that firmware update coming out for existing core owners, adding virtual shifting and auto calibration to those units. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions on this, so if you do have any queries, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And stay tuned, there's a lot more to come on this topic of kickers and virtual shifting. If you want to be across that, make sure you hit subscribe to this channel down below and we'll see you soon. Oh, later, mate. Doing some work, buddy, okay? What the, what do you want? I'm just doing this. Oh, I need a perfect storage. I need a perfect storage. We can't, so can I just do that, okay? Love you. Bye. Bye.